Welcome back, Rope Droppers. I'm gonna tell you eight ways to have the best day ever in Magic Kingdom. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Now let's jump into the video. Starting in at number eight transportation. Staying at a Disney resort offers convenience and efficiency in transportation to Magic Kingdom, making it an ideal choice for visitors seeking a seamless and enjoyable experience. Disney resorts provide guests with complimentary transportation options such as buses, monorails, and boats directly connecting them to the Magic Kingdom entrance. These dedicated transportation services operate regularly, reducing wait times and ensuring swift and hassle-free journeys. The proximity of Disney resorts to the Magic Kingdom also means shorter travel durations, allowing guests to maximize their time in the park and enjoy more attractions, shows, and magical experiences. Staying at a Disney resort not only simplifies transportation logistics, but also contributes to a more immersive and enchanting Disney vacation. Staying on Disney property is always the best way to go, especially when it comes to transportation. I always stay on property. Parks, it comes with that is just the best and it's complimentary. So you're not like paying every single time that you ride something. I really try to advise clients to do this as well, but I think those of us that always have stayed on property, because I have like ever since I first went when I was 18 with my aunt, we stayed that year um, on property. I've never known any different. So for me, the thought of like parking in those giant parking lots, taking those trams in, and the worst part, like at the end of the night, you're done, you're toasted, you've seen the fireworks, your kids are tired. The thought of schlepping out to my car and taking another, you know, half hour, 45 minutes just to get to my car and then having to exit parking lots, like, by the time I get to my car, I'm already home and in my jammies at my resort. Like yeah. I just, it, that is the worst thing I could think of at, after a big day in the park. So I think, you know, the fact that we always fly in or even drive in, but we still park that car, stay at the, um, the resorts with Disney and just never look at our car again while we're there. Plus it keeps me in that Disney bubble, which I love. I like just using that Disney transport you know, it just, it keeps you in that little bubble of Disney and that little happy area and I love it. Yeah, it does. It definitely just takes your vacation to the next level, like feeling a little bit more immersed mm -hmm. in a different world. But you're right. I don't even think about that. My sister is a cast member. She's kind of the first time when I went to the parks with her, I've, I've, she's drove there before. And I just remember going to Magic Kingdom specifically. That parking lot is huge. And so oh. the parking lot, it, part, the parking lot itself is really big. And then you got to take a tram to the ticket and transportation center, staying at a resort, way to go, take, take business transportation and kind of have a general idea of the quick Quickest way to get to Magic Kingdom, I suppose. I want to say too, I think sometimes people look at some of the off property hotels and it says, yeah. you know, we have a, a shuttle every half an hour or whatever it may be to the parks. What they don't always realize is those do not drop off right at the park like the other, like the on property Disney resorts do. So, you know, in that case, they're going to still drop you at that ticket and transportation center and you're still going to have to find your way to Magic Kingdom, which again, giant pain. So um, you had mentioned earlier, just knowing the fastest way to get places. And, you know, there's so many ways you can get places. There's boats, there's Skyliner, there's monorail, there's the whole jam. But I think that's where having somebody and I'm going to give myself a plug, having a travel agent that knows and can say like, oh, to get from this resort to this park, here's your fastest way or oh, you want to go mm -hmm. to Blizzard Beach? I'm going to send you to Animal Kingdom Lodge, then you're going to hop a bus here and that's your fastest way. Like, I think that's where we really come in handy, especially for those first and second time clients. Number seven, budgeting for Genie Plus. By planning for a budget for Genie Plus, visitors can prioritize their favorite rides without the stress of long queues. The convenience and time-saving aspect of Genie Plus contribute to a more efficient and satisfying visit, allowing guests to make the most of their time at Magic Kingdom and creating lasting memories without compromising on the budget. The convenience of using the Genie Plus service through the Disney Genie app adds a modern pool and tech-savvy element to the theme park experiences. Genie Plus is the way to go. I've either done Fast Pass when I visited, I've either now I'm doing Genie Plus when I go. Cost ranges, you know, from $16 to $35, kind of depending on your date and when you're there and that, all those sorts of things. If you are looking to kind of accomplish a good amount of things within your park day, Genie Plus is like you, you had to do it. It's just one of those things that I have never gone to the parks without doing any of that. And so I am curious, like people that like do not do any of the technology things. And that's so interesting to me because I'm like, man, like I think it, Disney would just be waiting in lines all day long. Like it already is, but GD Plus kind of helps with that. I just don't think I could do without it. So you know me, I, I really love paying for stuff up front. That's why I love the dining plan. That's why I like Memory Maker, you know, paying all that stuff before you go and then you're good. You don't have to worry about so much money while you're there. I do really wish 
that you could purchase Genie Plus as part of your tickets like you can for Disneyland because you can do that there and it's kind of like it's done you've already taken care of it and you don't have that stress daily of waking up and having to purchase it before seven and all that stuff because it's yet another kind of stressful thing in your morning when you're trying to get off the parks um but no i always use it too um i think in magic kingdom you kind of have to like there's so much to ride in magic kingdom especially if you only have one day like you gotta have some genie plus you can handle Epcot probably without it, especially if you just don't really care about like Remy's Ratatouille Adventure and some of the things that you might use it on. Or if you don't really care about Frozen, some of those rides in Epcot. I think you could even get away without it in Animal Kingdom if you're willing to like seriously rope drop and head straight to Pandora the second the park opens. But for Hollywood Studios and Magic Kingdom, I really, really think you gotta have it to have a successful day. Yeah, I think... I agree, definitely. Magic Kingdom, like, you know, it is kind of that main park too. So it always feels like the busiest park. And so it's just one yep. that you just, I always kind of plan for, for Genie. Even my little tightwad self, I do it. Like, <laughs> I will I will buy Genie the day of because it's going to make yeah. your, your day and your enjoyment so much stronger. Number six, virtual queue. Participating in the virtual queue system at Magic Kingdom is crucial for visitors looking to maximizing their enjoyment and minimize wait times for popular attractions. This innovative approach allows guests to secure a virtual spot in line for select rides, enabling them to explore other areas of the park or engage in different activities while awaiting their turn. The virtual queue not only eliminates the need to physically see and in long lines, but also adds a level of flexibility to the day's itinerary. By embracing the virtual queue, visitors can make the most of their time at Magic Kingdom, experiencing more attractions and entertainment without the frustration of extended wait times. I love big thrilling rides and the only virtual queue ride in Magic Kingdom is Tron and it's a great ride and if it's something that you plan to must do in Magic Kingdom virtual queue is just one of those things that you're gonna have to wake up and reserve it's time for or try for later in the morning I don't have any little ones and if you do and they aren't maybe they're tall enough or maybe they're just not interested in riding something like that you could probably avoid doing the virtual queue in Magic Kingdom if you love the big thrilling rides you know Tron is the newest ride right now that is requiring that and I love to do it every single time. Totally. Um, I'm I'm all for it. And you know, like I did it when I did the Halloween party. There's a separate virtual queue that night that I think started at six. We did that. Mm -hmm. But to me, like if I'm in the park, I want to ride, you know, whatever is the newest signature ride in that park. And so for me, totally worth it. But again, another pile of stress added into your day. You know, it's one mm -hmm. more thing that you have to get up and do. And I feel like, you know, my aunt stands there with like the world clock on and I'm like, okay, because the very first couple of times I tried to do virtual queue, I was so mad at myself because I'm like, okay, I've instructed all my clients to do it and they've been successful. Like they would text me and be like, we got it for this or we got it for that. And I'm like, yes, amazing. And then I went to do it and I missed it twice in the same day. Never got to do it. And I was like, really? All my advice works for everyone else and I, I can't do it, but I've since gotten better. So it's a skill. That's funny that you say that because I remember when I did it for the first time in Guardians, me and my sister had just gotten off mission space and I remember we, remember we were sitting there and the, it was about to be, I don't know, one o'clock, is that when the next one is yeah. or something? And I remember like refreshing and within seconds it was booked up and neither, neither of us got it. And I'm, I'm like, what in the world? And that was like one of the first times I had ever used it. And I'm like, I yeah, I figured it out since then. But, um, but I, I also, yeah. it, I struggled at first, so. But I thought how many people literally planned their vacation over them or their kids seeing um, Galaxy's Edge. And that was like the pinnacle thing. You had to ride Rise. Well, think how many people went home disappointed because they did not get to experience that. Maybe they can't come back again next year. Maybe that was their one big trip. And that's what I don't like about virtual queues because I just, to me, it's not a fair system. And you know me, I'm like, I want it blanket fair for everybody, whether you have money, whether you don't, whatever. And it, it doesn't seem quite fair. Number five, early entry. Early entry at Magic Kingdom holds significant importance for visitors aiming to make the most of their Disney experience. The extra time granted during early entry allows guests to access the park before it officially opens to the public, providing a head start on popular attractions with shorter wait times. This valuable opportunity enables visitors to enjoy iconic rides such as Seven Dwarfs Mine Train and Space Mountain before the park becomes crowded later in the day. Another reason why staying on Disney World property is crucial to the Disney World experience. You do have to stay on property to receive this park. Another huge 
huge reason why staying on property is really the way to go when going to Disney World. I always take advantage of this because now I get to enter the park earlier than people that are not staying on property and you can rope drop earlier. I always take advantage of this. The earlier you can start in the morning, you can probably get a lot of things done around noon, one o'clock, and then you can maybe go back to your hotel and take a break and come back or whatnot. It really does get more crowded as the day goes on. It really does like make such a difference. I know it's only a half an hour, but it's mm -hmm. a huge difference. Like it's big. So since we're talking Magic Kingdom today, I'm going to give you a little bonus. I'm going to give you my strategy on Ooh, how okay. I work throughout Magic Kingdom. Even though you all have not booked packages with me, maybe <laughs> you will. So um, here's my thing. If you are dead set on riding Seven Dwarfs Mind Train, like if it's going to make or break your day, um, you can rope drop straight over into Fantasyland and get in line for that. The thing is, you very well still could be standing in line for that for the first two full hours of your day because it really will fill up that fast. So I never really want to do that. I will ride it, but like Lex and I have talked about before, that's a ride for us when maybe crowds are down or during a parade, whatever. It's not our end all be all. Um, so what I do is I go over and even though they don't open Adventureland at rope drop, so not a half an hour early, you can go over there and you can literally be the first person in line for when the park officially opens a half an hour later and you can be the first one into Adventureland. I have been the first person of the day on Pirates, like literally first person in the front boat. I've done Jungle Cruise, Lickety Split, and then you can rush right over. You can do Splash Mountain, Thunder Mountain, whatever you want around that area. And that's a really good strategy as long as you're not, you know, dying to ride Seven Dwarfs first thing in the morning. You're welcome. Yeah, that's a that's a good one. I usually I'm usually going towards Tomorrowland, but I like that idea. I'm gonna try that next time. Yeah, it's worked really well for me about three times. Number four, being knowledgeable of rides that have low wait times. Understanding which rides have low wait times at Magic Kingdom is essential for optimizing your theme park experience. This knowledge allows you to strategically plan your itinerary, ensuring that you can enjoy more attractions without spending excessive time in lines. By targeting rides with shorter wait times, you can navigate the park more efficiently, making the most of each moment and maximizing the number of experiences throughout your visit. This not only minimizes frustration associated with long queues, but also provides an opportunity to explore additional areas of the park or revisit favorite attractions, contributing to an overall more enjoyable and satisfying day at Magic Kingdom. I feel like this kind of relates to entering the park early, is also being knowledgeable of what parks or be knowledgeable of what rides are usually the less popular ones, the ones that don't necessarily have a longer wait times. So like maybe not rope dropping teacups right when you get there because that one, chances are you can ride for less than 20 minutes any time of the day. So it just kind of allows for you to accomplish more throughout your day and feeling like you left Magic Kingdom with a productive park day and not just, oh, I waited in all these lines and didn't get to do a whole thing. So that's kind of like yeah. small kind of thing to know, but if, if you don't really go to Disney very often, you might not necessarily realize what rides are more popular than the others. It part, like hurts my heart to hear that somebody like wasted a lightning lane <laughs> on something they didn't do. And you know, talked about it on here before, but if I have a client that's like, why me, lightning lane, small world, I'm like, oh. yes. <laughs> um, tried to advise them on that, but you know, sometimes you just, you get excited and you don't know. But I will say one really good strategy is when whoever you're with, be it friends, family, your kids, when you're on the way to the park that day, kind of say each one of you, like one thing I really want to do today. Like what's the one attraction that if we don't ride it, I'm going to feel like I missed out. And you can kind of use that throughout the day to make sure everybody gets at least their one special song. And if that means you do wait in line for an hour or so for one thing, okay, because it was important to you, you know, or one of your, your party members. So I think just kind of stating those things and kind of having in your mind my priorities, because it's easy to get sidetracked. Maybe you're on your way to do something that's really important, but then you're like, oh, but this is only a 10 minutes, we should stop. And that's, I can do the carousel quick. And then before you know it, you didn't get to the thing you really wanted to do and you're disappointed. Number three 
mobile ordering. Mobile order is crucial in Magic Kingdom for a variety of reasons. Firstly, it allows visitors to save valuable time by pre-ordering meals and snacks through the official Disney mobile app. This means you can skip long lines at quick service restaurants, especially during peak hours and have your food ready for pickup upon arrival. Mobile ordering also enables better customization of orders, catering to specific dietary preferences or restrictions. Moreover, the convenience of mobile order contributes to a smoother flow of your day, allowing you to focus more on attractions, entertainment, and explore in the park rather than spending excessive time waiting in food lines. Overall, mobile order is a time-saving and convenient feature that enhances the overall efficiency and enjoyment of dining experiences in Magic Kingdom. What I like to do when I visit is if I'm waiting in line for a ride or a show, whatever it may be, um, and I know that it's lunchtime, I might mobile order something and you can like select a time of when you're going to pick up something and I'll order lunch and then by the time I get off the ride, I can, I, it'll be time for me to go pick it up. And, and it just kind of helps, you know, avoiding getting there and having to wait in a little bit of a line to order your food and then sit down. But mobile ordering usually a lot quicker just kind of allows for you to get more things done for your day. Um, I'll add to that that, you know, I know it's hard when you're there with little kids because when their tummies need to eat, their tummies need to eat and that's the mm -hmm. way it is. But if you're there adult wise or even older kids, whatever, um, I think it's so smart to kind of shift your meals a little bit. You know, maybe you get a snack mid morning so that you can push that lunch maybe back to 1 30 or two. And then maybe you're not going to have a full dinner until later in the evening. But you know, if you can kind of shift those meals a little bit and not be, you know, at Cosmic Ray's Starlight Cafe at 11.55 when the whole world is lined up trying to get their mobile orders, that can be a really helpful thing for your day too. Oh, another small tip as far as kind of water goes, if you did not know this, I like recently learned this within the last few years. I did not know this. Every quick service give, gives you a free water cup. And this can go for like any time throughout your day. If you just need to go grab some water, I'm kind of I'm water snob. I don't really love Dasani water. And I know that Disney sells Dasani water bottles. If I don't have my own water bottle, sometimes I will just go to a quick service and grab a couple water cups and it's great. So go stop at a quick service, grab a water cup. What is amazing to me about you is that you don't really want to drink the Dasani, but you will drink the Florida swamp water. I know, I, I know. I would, I would much rather drink the tap water than Dasani. That's so funny to me. I mean, like, here's the thing. I, I like Dasani fine. I don't care. I'm not a water snob, I guess, whatever. Um, but I don't, I just don't want to carry stuff around. Like I yeah. wear a crossbody bag or, you know, um, a belt bag or whatever. And like, that's, I don't want junk in my hands all the time. So I don't really want to carry water bottles around. And I definitely don't want to carry like a Yeti or any, you know, anything like that. So I am all for the quick service. What my aunt and I usually do is like a lot of times we'll split a quick service meal and that comes with like a Diet Coke, which we definitely need by one or two in the afternoon because we're like starting to drag and get a little, little sleepy, but we'll share the Diet Coke and then we'll also get two free waters. And so, yeah, we're keeping ourselves awake, but we're also hydrating. So that's a great system for us because um, I just don't always want one more thing in my hand to carry around, you know? I totally agree. and. I'm usually taking a small bag of some sort and chances are I don't have room to carry a heavy water bottle. Oh. Grab some water cups when you go get lunch or any time of day. Yeah. Number two, entertainment. Entertainment in Magic Kingdom is a captivating blend of parades, stage shows, character interactions, and nighttime spectaculars ensuring a magical experience for visitors of all ages. Key attractions include the iconic Happily Ever After fireworks show, enchanting parades like the Festival of Fantasy Parade, and character meet and greets with beloved Disney figures. Utilize the official Disney app to stay updated on show schedules and character appearances, allowing you to plan your day strategically. Consider reserving Genie Plus for popular entertainment options to secure prime viewing spots without the wait. As someone who kind of visits often, I don't always prioritize those kinds of things throughout my day, especially if I've seen it, you know. I do catch the fireworks every single visit. That is something that I do like to watch all every single visit. Great thing about your My Disney Experience app is you can kind of see what times the parades are and um, if you have a certain character that you plan to have a meet and greet with and, and things like that you can kind of plan out your day in that way as well if you know that you're going to want to catch all of those castle shows then check your my disney experience out for what times that those happen and yeah i'm kind of just a fireworks person when it comes to shows at magic kingdom what about you yeah um i'm not really a parade girl the exception to yeah. that is like a special event like the mm. halloween party the christmas party those parades are like stellar I am gonna sit and I'm gonna watch every single thing, but I, I don't really need the daytime parades. If I catch one like walking through, 
it's great, but I don't like sit on the sidewalk and wait for them. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna make a PSA to everybody, and I'm gonna sound like the grouchy old woman who doesn't have young children. But please be mindful. I know that your kid wants to see the show like everybody else, but be mindful that there are gaggles of people behind and around you. That if you put your kid up on your shoulders, you have just blocked so many other people, kids and adults alike, from seeing. So. Be a little creative about it. A wonderful thing to do if you have a stroller is to let your kid put their legs on like the arms of the stroller. So they're up about at adult height and you can kind of help them balance that way and they can still see, but they don't have to be actually physically up on your shoulders. And I know some of you are being like, if I want to put my kid on my shoulders, I will because I paid a lot of money to be here, but so did everybody else. Um, mm -hmm. And my last PSA is, don't sing along with every song in the fireworks show <laughs> because it's always somebody who's doing that and you're like Shh, i didn't pay to hear you I yeah there that's no. yeah there there is always somebody that i've been next yeah. to that is singing the whole the whole the whole yes. show and there's so many people next to you that it's not really possible for you to kind of put some distance in between you you know like you can't move for that amount of yeah, time like, so oh. <laughs> One, I have one more. <laughs> okay. A lot of times, and this is super smart, a lot of times you'll like park your family. Like sometimes, um, like my aunt has a bad knee, so sometimes I'll get her parked someplace where she can sit down and kind of wait for the fireworks. And then I'll go grab us food or get a snack and then I'll come back. But please be mindful. This is kind of like being in an airplane. Don't get like the stinky, most onion smelling hot dog from Casey <laughs> and then bring that in, like eat it right next to people. Like people do this all the time. And I'm like, oh, like it's just, it's kind of gross. Like you're sitting there with that onion smell coming at you and it's like, oof, and there's nowhere to go and it's hot. So just yeah. be mindful of your <laughs> choices. That's true. Yeah. When it comes to fireworks, you know, and, and you know, other parades and stuff, like, what did we find out courteous. today? You are a water snob, and apparently <laughs> I'm a fireworks snob. That's okay. That's okay. I've had the same exact issues every single trip. So the number one way to ensure that you have the best day ever in the Magic Kingdom is knowing the best bathrooms. Magic Kingdom offers several well-maintained and themed restrooms for visitors' convenience. While opinions on the best bathroom may vary, a commonly praised location is the Tangled themed restroom area in Fantasyland. Inspired by the movie Tangled, this restroom features charming lanterns and picturesque scenery, creating a unique immersive experience. Another notable location is the restrooms near the Liberty Tree Tavern in Liberty square known for their cleanliness and spacious facilities. Additionally, the restrooms at the base of Main Street USA provide easy access upon entering or exiting the park. Keep in mind that Disney consistently maintains high standards for restroom cleanliness throughout Magic Kingdom, so you can generally expect a positive experience in any facility. Where the best bathrooms are in Magic Kingdom and this one we're talking about, like I know the Tangled Ones in Fantasyland have like really cool theming. Like you think you walk in that little area and you're like, ooh, is there a little ride over here? And it's not not. it's just the bathrooms but the yep. theming there is super cool um, one of my own like bathrooms that I, I feel like nobody goes to do you know where Gaston usually has a meet and greet and then there's that oh there's a little place where you can get cinnamon rolls in the Gaston's brew I can't remember what that's called yes. tavern or something yeah uh, it's the tavern yeah yes and there there are bathrooms over there that I yes. feel like nobody goes to, so that is... Nobody knows! Yes, nobody knows. Um, that's another kind of my own personal tip. I feel like there was one in Tomorrowland that I feel like... I oh. love the one in Tomorrowland because it's cooler. Like, do you yes. ever notice that? It's yes. not as hot in there. And you hardly ever have to, like... I mean, well, women, like, we're... I know men, you never really have to wait. But for us women, like, you really never have to wait in there. I mean, yeah. you don't wait a ton in most Disney bathrooms because they're all really big. Like, it's yeah. well thought out. But, I, you know, I really like using that one over in Tomorrowland, kind of over... Um, it's like back a little behind Space Mountain's entrance. Is that the one you're thinking of? Yeah. Like on the right, if you're looking at Carousel of Progress, there's one like on the left of that way back over closer to Space Mountain, kind of behind a wall. Okay. And um, kind of like where that stage is where they yes. do... Um, and then there's one, yeah, over kind of like closer to Buzz Lightyear um, on the other side of Carousel of Progress that I like. Yes. Too. Isn't there one right there? Yes, yeah. there is. That's what first one I was thinking of. But um, so something you might not have thought of before is 
as bathrooms, but it's something to think about because, you know, that's something that you're going to partake at some point in your day. So it might help you have a little bit more of a, a smoother experience if you know where these bathrooms are. For sure. And I love the one, um, do you know the one that's like perched right between um, um, Adventureland where you pass through and then you're in um, Liberty Square. But there's like bathrooms right there on that little underpass between the two, um, kind of where the yes. little Aloha Isle used to be. Yeah, and that bathroom is gigantic. Now it it is crowded, but like you never wait. I will say it's probably the least fresh smelling bathroom in Magic Kingdom, but you know, it's, it's a great location. It's one you can just pop into as you go in and out of kingdoms and stuff. So if you can just get yourself in and out by the afternoon, it's always a little, a little unfresh. Yeah, but I feel like the, the job done. <laughs> I I feel like the farther you are from the main area of Magic Kingdom, the kind of the the better the bathrooms are. The only thing else that I'll say about the bathrooms is, I know in real life we don't do a lot of like in case or like oh I'm just gonna try, but I do that at Disney because like sometimes if I'm like this is kind of my last chance for a while, and we passed a you know like we'll just dart in in case anything you know <laughs> like a little and then like you know you're on with your day and you're not going to be stuck in line because the worst is like being in line and really having to go and and there's no place to go you don't want to lose your spot you don't want to be that person that goes out and comes back in yep. so i think you know once in a while all right everybody tries is a good idea 